Hi, my name is Lisa Hack. My practice is called Thrive Fitness and Nutrition Lifestyle. My calling is helping people expand their worlds, their lives, and my tool is the body and movement. And I'm addressing today the foot. I've been getting a lot of questions about the foot and it's amazing the synchronicity that a lot of my clients are coming in with either foot pain, foot problems, or just weak feet. Weak feet is something that I'm seeing a lot of that I want to really encourage people to strengthen. Imagine walking on a dead fish, like if you had a floppy fish or a noodle, you're not going to get very far. Your walking, your gait, your power is only as weak, is only as strong, excuse me, as your weakest link. And if your foot's weak, you really have no propelling power. And because we wear shoes with heavy soles, because our feet are sedentary all day long, our feet get weak. So today is all about the foot. Um, I got the question I got was about a fallen arch, and so a fallen arch is is partly the structure of the bone structure for some people, but it's also about the musculature of the foot. So today I'm going to address basically um, basic strength of the arch. So when we look at the bone structure of the foot, first of all, the foot is an amazing um, appendage. It has many different bones. It's not just one bone. All these bones are supposed to move against each other, and often with our feet, the bones get stuck together so that they don't move, and also the muscles of the foot, all the intricate muscles of the foot get weak and so they don't allow the movement of the foot. What I want to show you is that the natural arch of the foot with a, with a normal foot, with a, an average foot, is going to be an arch. And so when the, the foot hits the ground and then comes down on the forefoot, there's that arch. That arch is supposed to collapse and that collapsing is shock absorption, shock absorption, shock absorption, excuse me, shock absorption. So this is your first shock absorption for your body for gait, for walking. If you don't absorb shock well here, that shock's gonna move up through your structure and create more wear and tear at the knee, at the hip, at the spine, at the neck. Now when you have a flat foot, you don't have that shock absorption. So what we're going to work on today is strengthening the whole arch of the foot. One thing I want to say about that is your big toe is a big part of the arch integrity. So having a strong big toe and having a flexible big toe is important. When your big toe is tight in either direction, in either direction, this direction or this direction, that's not going to be a strong toe. A, a tight muscle is a weak muscle generally. So let me show you a few strategies that I will suggest that you can do any place to strengthen that arch. And this is going to be a beginning strategy. There are many other progressions from there on, but let's start with this beginning strategy. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have you, hold on, I've drawn these lines so you can see this big toe line, and I'm going to have you just hold on and start by just rounding the ankle, making the biggest rotation you can. So first establish what your rotation is. By the way, this is really good for your brain. It feeds the brain blood because you have to coordinate this. Then go the other direction so you establish the baseline of what your rotation is. Now the first exercise is going to be flexing the feet, the toes down and flexing that foot into an arch. Big warning here, you can cramp at the bottom of your foot. This happens commonly. So just stop and relax. So I'm going to keep that flex and then I'm going to rotate my ankle in the biggest rotation I can. If it starts to cramp, just back off and rest for a moment. So do that about 10 reps. Then I'm going to go the other direction about 10 reps, keeping the flex of my toes, the flex of my arch as big as I can. And then you're going to rest that. Obviously do that on the other side. Then the second part is we're going to pull the toes up as much as they can. And then we're going to go through the whole rotation in as big a circle as you can with the toes flexed up, going 10 reps in one direction, 10 reps in the other direction. That's a really good warm up. It's a really good brain warm up. It, it's going to groove in this motion for your brain and build some neural pathways. The next exercise is going to be a towel scrunch. So you can do this on a, on a slick floor, any floor that's slick. You just get a towel and you go ahead and stand at the end and you're going to grab with your ball then the toes and pull back and you're gonna you're trying to hunch up as much as you can into that arch 
And I'll tell you, I, I don't really particularly have strong feet and I can really feel this in my arch. So you just go through this and keep pulling the towel. And that's really flexing that arch. You use all the toes, not just the big toe. All those toes, because all those toes are part of what form the muscularity of the arch. So you do that on, on both sides. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna flush out that foot, which is going to be to rest and clear all of those um, wastes and acids out of the foot. It's gonna feel tired. So now we're gonna flush out the foot. I wanna warn you on this one. Find something that you can, notice that there's an angle here. This is not 90 degrees to the floor. There's a slight angle. This is a, a Reebok step top, and it's a great thing to use. You can probably get it on eBay or Craigslist. People want to discard these all the time. I'm putting something soft, a padding, a yoga mat, up against there. And then I'm going to place my foot, butt it up against there. So that I've got the ball of my foot up against there. Notice this is not 90 degrees. It's got a slight angle. And I'm keeping my foot against there. Now, please be careful. If you have tight feet, be mindful, be cautious, be considerate to your foot. I'm going to hold that up against there using this other foot to pull me in because this, this foot will want to slip back. And then I'm gonna very carefully drop into the knee. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna stretch all those muscles all the way up. And I'm gonna drop the knee and then come back up. Again, another warning that you have all of your body weight on this very stretched, small little tendons of your toes. You can hurt yourself, so please be gentle. Be cautious, be mindful, you can really hurt yourself. Have I said that enough? So I'm, what I'm doing is I'm coming down at the bottom where my knee is low, I'm feeling a big stretch through my big toe muscle, my toe muscles, and then up through my calf and Achilles. And then I'm gonna do that maybe about five times. There are more advanced parts to this, but I'm showing you the beginning part. Now that flushes the fatigue muscle from the towel scrunch. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna end with, over here, where you're going to be on the, the top of the step and I'm going to be about medium stance. My feet are right under the hips. I'm lining my feet up like this. I'm not turned out. I'm not turned in. My feet are lined up. My big toe is the lead, the lead um, toe, and I'm going to push up to a heel raise and then back down to just below um, the level of the, of the step. Now when I go up, I don't want to turn out. I want to come straight up through the big toe. Let the big toe lead and then come back down and then up and then back down. Now, depending on your condition of your feet and your calves and your body, the numbers are going to change for you. I, you can go with whatever reps feels about right. You'll feel fatigue in your calves. I'm pushing through the big toes at the, at the top of the range, driving the toes into the pad, into the step. So I'm thinking about five to 10 reps for a beginner and maybe more like 15 to 25 for somebody who's, who's more used to this. Now that's going to strengthen the calves and the foot. Your calves are the muscles of your foot generally. Now what we wanna do is, is we've done some isolated stuff for the foot. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna integrate it because when we work a muscle, we have to integrate that muscle into the full function of your body, into that team. So you've got that player, the foot, and we want that player to play well with the rest of the team. So waist integrated are going to be walking, but walking where you're sort of focusing on leading through the big toe. So when I walk, I want to push off the big toe. I'm pushing off the big toe when I push off, and when I, I'm going to also ask you to walk backwards. So walking backwards where you take a step but you lead with the big toe, lead with the big toe. This is hard to balance on. This is great for your brain, but I'm finding the big toe and finding, trying to walk through that line. Walk through that line so my big toe gets strong. Another way that is great to integrate this work, this footwork into the rest of your team of your body is walking uphill, walking or hiking where you're walking on uneven ground. That really works the foot and integrates all of that stimulation into the rest of the body, into the hips, into the spine. Um, another thing is I've created a routine that's called a standing core routine. It's 10 exercises long and that um, really works the foot. It has some very specific things that work the foot, work the arch, 
and then bring the that foot strength integrated into the rest of the body. And that's called the standing core routine. And I've created a video series online that's called Three-Dimensional Dynamic Body Activation. And you can find that on my website, www.thrivefnl.com. Keep the questions coming. Thank you so much.